Okay, welcome to Engine Tutorial 01. Today I'm going to try and show you how you can sequence uh, synthesizers, hardware synthesizers, with the Social Entropy Engine hardware sequencer, this. Um, let's start with a little overview of the layout of the engine. Um, important for this tutorial is that the engine has eight tracks. Okay, they're represented on this little mini keyboard over here. Uh, you can see them labeled here track one, two, eight, and when you turn on the engine for the first time by default uh, it goes into um, pattern mode track one and it's usually empty and what you have to do initially is set up these tracks to point them to your various MIDI gear. Now in my setup I have various uh, hardware desktop synthesizers. There's um, a Moog Minotaur over here for bass, Korg Volca Keys, uh, Korg Volca Bass, I have a System 1, Roland Era System 1, which I'm using as a, a controller keyboard. Um, I'll talk about how that's connected in, in a second. Uh, Juno, uh, Roland JU06, a Juno clone, and a TB3 here for some bass. They're all connected to my mixer, and um, they're sort of sort of put in the same sequence, if you like, uh, around the table that they are on, both on the mixer and how they correspond and how I have them set up to the eight tracks. So, for instance, on my mixer, the Volca keys is into channel one. So I'm, I then decided that I'd put that one onto track one of the engine, uh, and likewise, the Volca bass is on channel 2 of the mixer, so it's on channel 2, on track 2, should I say, of the engine, and so forth. Uh, and So what you're going to want to do first is, is define the, the MIDI channels, the ports and the channels that the uh, gear that you've got is connected to. So engine has two MIDI outputs, two MIDI ports, should I say, two MIDI output ports. And I have some of the synthesizers on port 1 and some on port 2, and how I set them up is as follows. So you would use function to get to some of the commands on the engine that are displayed in red at the top. So you can hold in function at any point in time and choose one of the commands. Or you can pin the function by double clicking it and you'll see it flashes. That means that function is now pinned. So if I press any of the knobs, I will get their function, the red function, rather than their original uh, designation. So to set up a MIDI channel, while in function mode, hold in the MIDI channel button while the track that you're interested in is selected. So I've got track 1 selected, I hold in the MIDI channel, and I can turn this dial here, dial 1, knob 1, to choose the MIDI channel. Now I have already predefined in the synthesizers themselves the MIDI channels that they'll be receiving information on, MIDI information on. So I've set the Volker keys to receive MIDI on channel 1. So this is port 1, channel 1. On track 2, I've got my Volker bass. That is set up on port 1 as well, but on channel 2, port 1, channel 2, and so forth. The Moog is port 1, channel 3. Uh, carrying on, uh, if I go to this one, I have my system 1 here on port 2, the second port, channel 1. And I've got the Juno on port 2, channel 2, and so on. So once they're set up, you can actually choose any of the tracks and you can, you'll can you be able to hear the sounds of those tracks if you give it some incoming MIDI. Now I have my system 1 MIDI out coming to engines MIDI in. And I've got local off set on the uh, system one. That means that when I press the key on the keyboard, because the local uh, the, the keyboard isn't is is no longer local to the synthesizer itself, it's the local switch is off. That means that when I would usually press a key, I won't hear anything unless that. So all that's actually happening is the MIDI is coming out of the keyboard and into the sequencer, and then the sequencer is routing that MIDI back out to whichever channel is selected. So channel 1 is selected, I send some MIDI in, I'm hearing the sound of the Volker. Channel 2, the Volker bass. 
three, Moog. System one, and there's the Juno, and there's the TV. Okay, so there are the channels in our setup. What you would also want to do is choose the type, the pattern type for each track. Okay, and to do that, you need to change the pattern type. There's three pattern types in Engine. There are drum patterns, synth patterns, and controller patterns. So this tutorial is about synth, uh, sequencing synthesizers, so I need them to be synthesizer track. Right, changing the pattern type then, while in function mode, hold in change pattern type, you'll see it's a synth pattern. I've already designated them as synth patterns, but using knob 1 you can either make them a synth pattern, a drum pattern, or a controller pattern. And you'll notice after I've changed the type of pattern, the section button's flashing. In other words, if I had to click that now, that has now changed this track and pattern type to a controller pattern. I'm going to change it back to a synth pattern. And so you would do that for all your tracks. You'll set them up for them to be either a synth, drum, or controller. Right, with all of that set up, we can actually now start to sequence something. So, I'm going to start off with a little drum beat. Now, I've got this drum beat coming from uh, my TR8. So, the TR8 is actually just receiving MIDI clock from the engine. Um, so, I'm not actually going to use uh, the engine today to sequence the drums. They're already sequenced inside the TR8. If I just hit play, I get the drum beat coming from the TR8. Now, I could use my controller keyboard and play a bass line. Or I could, and, and record that in, or I could um, use the step sequencer. So for now, uh, for this particular track, I'm going to use the step sequencer to show you how that works. You'll see the step sequencer is currently running, and it's a 16 beat pattern, 16 step pattern. I can change the length of the pattern at any point so by using the time button and clicking on section and you'll see it goes into the next section and maybe I wanted a 32 step pattern I would choose the 32nd step so section 2 last step button gives me now a 32 step sequence and you'll see while I'm looking at the second section you don't see the pattern running long if I switch I can switch between the two sections to get to the first 16 or the second 16 notes. Um, so let's, um, I'm going to just use a 16 uh, step pattern for the first one. So I set it back, time mode, I set it back, and now I'll just program in a few notes. Okay, they're a little high, so maybe what I'm going to do is transpose them down. So to do that, I'm going to hit apply transport and the down button and they're all transposed 12 semitones down. Maybe another nice deep bass. But they're all the same note. So how do I change them to be different pitches? Well it's simple as hold in one of the particular pitches and choose a new note on the MIDI keyboard. So it's alright. And now they're all short notes, I can change the length of the notes as well by holding in one of the notes and pressing uh, one, of the key, one of the keys after it, and it will make that note longer. And you'll notice the lights are slightly dimmer, which indicates that it, this note is actually that long. Okay, also I can change the velocity of the notes by holding in um, the note and dialing this button, the dialing knob one. And you'll hear the, the accent on that note. Okay. 
So that's as easy as it is to program in a simple pattern. Um, now we might want to program something that has chords. So if I choose my polysynth over here, which is my tuner, Okay, and this time instead of, uh, okay, so this pattern has been designated to be quite long, so what I'm going to do is go into time mode and make it a shorter pattern again. what had happened there is it was previously on a 64 uh, note pattern 64 step pattern playing at half time so it needed to loop around to get to the end of the pattern to come back to how I changed it to be just 16 steps so now I can record something in this time instead of using steps and you can so I'm just going to record something in real time by holding in the record button and triggering it from my MIDI keyboard There we go. Now that was a chord, so what's happening? It looks like it's single notes, but if I click on this note, what you'll see is that actually it's, it recognizes that it's recorded in as a chord. And that's as easy as it is to record chords. 